Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is another exhibition match. Once again, Snuggle Base and Acronym on Trojan Hills. So this map is very hilly map. It's one of my favorite maps in the game. Very hilly. Everything is basically plus two metal. You have three easy start spots you can choose from. This, this one in the center, over the northeast, over to the southwest. Sorry, southeast or southwest. And the north side is mirrored. Well, mirrored, but it's rotationally symmetric. Usually, the the way this map goes. Players either take one of these two spots, and then usually go for the center. Generally speaking, the north player will go for this expansion while the south player goes over here. And, although in this particular case, because of this start location, this southeast area is more likely to be taken by the south player before the center west area. And then from there, you just have a lot of paths that can be attacked from. So often you'll see harassments go along here to the northwest and then attack north. Or they'll be going along one of these expansions. I mean, the center is the most common place you see a lot of things happen. You don't see a lot of units go around this area back here. But that is... That is... Um, that's hopefully something we see at some point. But yeah, that area is barely used. Also, if it looks familiar, for those of you who don't play a lot of 1v1s, this is basically a small version of Bandit Plains. But much... Much can be said about this map. However, let's watch the game itself and see how the players play out with it. Fungo base is going here, which... Yeah, see, the camera is just kind of wonky when it comes to the way that smooth mesh scrolling works. If there was some way of knowing where the smooth mesh scrolling location was, rather than the actual ground location, if I knew how to know that, that'd be great. But I don't, which is a pain in the butt. Anyway, Snuggle Base, going for Cloaky. Acronym going for Cloaky. So Snuggle Base is going to be building up pretty much the same way as Acronym is. Actually, Snuggle Base is going up... Are they going that much more aggressive? No, they have their con out. They have two glaives. Two glaives to three from Acronym. So Acronym going for the more typical opener that you generally see players go for. Okay, seriously, why is that not respecting Tilt Zoom? Whatever. Sorry, like I said, the camera has been wonky. x did a lot of work to help fix it in Lua, but it's... Uh, the engine is just a pain in the butt. Seriously, I don't, I don't understand why they have to break everything. Especially camera-wise. Like, camera's such a huge thing for an RTS game. You cannot break that and have an RTS game work properly. Anyway. So, Aquanim is... Now well, they're setting up in the back, as expected. Snuggle Base not yet setting up over to the northeast side of the map. A little bit surprising there. Yeah, as you can, also you can probably tell, this is like... The zoom in and out is a little bit unpredictable. I've mentioned X-Men, but X-Men has not been online in a long time, so I don't know where they are. Seriously, I, haven't seen, I have not seen X-Men in, around in days. I have no idea where they are or what's happened to them. And I haven't really had a whole lot of time to try to fix the problem, or try to work out what the problem is myself. Which is a bit of a pain. I think a lot of it's just the assumptions were changed, because it went from being purely engine interpolation to being Lua interpolation. So the Lua interpolation is, it sets the engine interpolation to do certain things, and the engine interpolation doesn't expect it. Actually, unless that's my own local camera, oh, whatever. <sighs> I'm getting distracted by the camera. This is what I mean, the camera has to work properly. Like, tilt zoom is also a very important feature. Anyone who's played Supreme Commander knows this to be true. Because it's extremely important, because you want to have overview on zoom, well, on scroll wheel, on zoom out, and then zoom in, you want to have the depth and such. No. Overhead camera is terrible. It's absolute shit. I'm sorry, you should not have to press a button. Doing this should not require a button to go to overview. And overall, this just works a lot better. Like, this is better user experience. This is better user interface. If this thing would actually work properly. <sighs> anyway. I thought I set this camera up properly so the tilts happened on per frame basis. Maybe I didn't do that. I probably should. Anyway, Snuggle Base is going. Snuggle Base is probably going to take this center. I mean, Aquanum split up their forces rather unwisely. Okay, this is working a lot better before. Okay, let's go back to the other camera. The local version of this camera. 
There we go. Of course, I've gone up, up the zoom speed way too much. Sorry about this. Let's pull that back down to it. Yeah, we go. That's a sensible speed. Just have to turn off the smooth mesh scrolling. <sighs> the one thing I miss about 91 is the camera worked. Didn't have to fiddle around with silly things and try to do every bunch of weird hacks to make it work. It just worked. Anyway. Camera sights and stuff is happening in the game, finally. Acronym. Taking a look. Okay, this is the harassment I was talking about along the northwest lanes. Like, trying to get this area in. Tear this apart. Though, Acronym, are they going to be able to defend in time? They do have a tick, so that will work fairly well. Snuggle Ways. Trying to get rid of this conjurer. And they do spot it. They do scout it out. Get it on that cliff. It was close, but it almost got away, but it did not completely get away. And Snuggle Base at this point managing to expand quite a lot. I think they're out expanding Akunim. Akunim is definitely going for the center east location, and Snuggle Base did go over to the southwest before anything else. And the commander unupgraded, but still in the way. Econ commander, so a bit threatened, but not too bad. Undefended. Six Glaives will be able to beat an Econ Commander just barely, if positioned properly. You have to micro them a bit, but it will work. Undefended. However, that's a Lotus, which counts as defense. So that doesn't really work that way. Not especially well in this particular case, at least. Anyway, Snuggle Base is... Wow, they are... It's really coming down to position. They are kind of behind when it comes to actual numbers, but in terms of their Glaive positioning... They're doing really well. Now, these glaives here is only half a dozen here compared to eight or so. Although these glaives have to move back. The snuggle base glaive run here is coming to an end. Needs to go around the back. The defenders are stopping anything from getting up here, while at the same time over the southwest to Stardust just rips everything apart before I can even commentate on it. Because Stardust, as well as over here, another Stardust killing Aquinas forces. Aquinas gonna lose all of these glaives. Trying to attack the Stardust directly. I don't think they're even paying attention to those glaives. But now they're dead, and now Snuggle Base, they, they've been having a position advantage. They can get in. Are there... There are no... Wow. There are, are no Stardusts for Aquinum at all on this map. There is a gunship switch, but there are no Stardusts. That's not going to work out too well. The Lotus is going to die. The Defender, the single lone Defender, is going to kill one and a half Glaives and then die. This one Glaive is probably going to maybe, if it's lucky, kill a Glaive. But it's not even going to be a thing. This tick, however, this might be a problem. But the tick's on the wrong side. Oh, it's on the right side now! Oh, wow! That is painful! All of those glades could have taken out that lotus first, and yet now they're all going to die because of that tick to the lotus. Every single one of them. At the same time, Akinum coming in, tearing apart this expansion in the center west side of the map. Avoiding that Stardust quite nicely, and the last glaive just unstuns in time, but it doesn't matter. Not quite in time. And time to deal a bit of damage before dying itself. So yeah, Aquanim and Snuggle Base are very even right now. And that... That is painful. For Snuggle Base, I'm sure. They, they had a good position, too. They still are going to be able to get ahead here. Like I said, they've had a position advantage this entire time. This is all inside their territory. If they get any workers around here... That's a good point. Okay, Skazzy pointing out, why do you need Stardust when LLTs can be used to bait Glaives into ticks? That's a very good point. Although I suppose you'd need the tick, and you'd need to bait them, and they need to actually fall for the bait. Where does Stardust just outright block an area and just say no? Nice flank coming in. Snuggle Base coming in along the front, well, on the back of the Glaives. A bunch of Glaives will be coming along the front as well to reinforce... Not quite as a flank, though. I don't know if that's what they expected to have happen. So one thing about 0k is when you're trying to do things like flanking maneuvers, units move around a lot, so it's really difficult to make that actually work the way you'd expect it to. They can't just think, oh, I'll just go for a flank. It'll work. They'll be trapped. They'll be stuck shooting. No. They'll move around, and it'll make actually setting up the flank very difficult. And once again, Aquanum pulling ahead. And now with a gunship switch with a bunch of rapiers, they have the glaives, they have the rapiers, they have... They pretty much everything they need. Wow. Sorry if they made anyone nauseous right there. But yeah, they have pretty much everything they need in order to get through this. That 
I think is going to turn this around. Although Snuggle Base is still very even, so it's going to come down to every fight. Every fight counts hugely. A bit surprised that these are point moving, not line moving, or triple line moving or something. Anyway, Skazi, it does need more ticks. I agree. But no ticks are forthcoming. Neither player going for ticks. Everyone going into... Actually, Warriors would also be a good idea right now. Like, one or two Warriors in this group... That would turn it around. That would just force these glaze back. I don't see that happening, though. And... That... Into a Strider Hub? Well, okay. Snuggle Base does have the economy to support that. Interesting jump, though. From Glaive into a Strider Hub directly. Can work, but it's a little unsafe. The amount of money they have to spend in setting this up beforehand... As the Rapiers come over the hill to try to deal with the Center West expansion, there's actually not much here, so there's not much they're going to be dealing with. A bunch of cloaked rectors reclaiming. Snuggle base reclaiming. Good to see that both players are, in fact, reclaiming this game. Although, I think they're still probably waiting a little bit too long in both cases. You can reclaim any time, basically. There's not a whole lot of limitation when you can reclaim. Because as long as your, your builders can get out of the way when threats come up, it's worth it to reclaim. Oh, at the same time, we do have Snuggle Base coming around the side. T a couple ticks! Ooh, those are good ticks. If it were the fact that there's just so many more units on Snuggle Base's side, though, but those are otherwise really good ticks, and actually Akronim coming in with reinforcements that will make those ticks work. Snuggle Base forced to abandon all of their glaives, or half their glaives, the half that was ticked out. That was a really, really good prep by Akronim. They knew Snuggle Base was going to attack from that particular angle, and they were already prepared. And I think Akronim's going to take this game. I don't see any easy way out of it right now. The Strider might turn things around. That Dante is the only hope that Snuggle Base has. They're putting a lot into that. Like, out of a disadvantageous position, they're trying to get out of Dante as a turnaround tool. With no anti-air... Why is there no anti-air? There's no gremlins, there's no... There is a warrior! There we go! Finally getting a warrior out, but I think at this point it's a little bit late. But yeah, there's no anti-air. There's... Glaives? Yeah, not really. Especially being that they are one-shot by rapiers. Oh, was the Dante spotted? I don't think... I don't know if I could have spotted the Dante. I don't think they did. I think at this point, Snuggle Base is still... It's still Snuggle Base... Slightly ahead by information, but honestly, Aquanim is so far ahead by actual unit counts. This is not going to work. I think Snuggle Base is going to try to go for another attack along this east side, though. There are no ticks currently in the ground. The east side is fairly open. The western side, actually very open. Ticks could go around here. There is a tick over here, so a direct assault will stop it. But going around the back, that would actually work. And the Dante moving forward... The Rapier is moving back after destroying that entire set of metal extractors. This Dante, that's... Well, getting Gremlin support. It desperately needed that. So this is basically the only thing that Snuggle Base has going for them right now. As Akonim rushes in with a drop... Oh, is that a, is that a Warrior drop? Yes, that is a Warrior drop. That is indeed a Warrior drop, because that is what you do in this case. You do a Warrior drop... On top of Rapiers. The Glaives can't do much against this. They can do a little bit. The Dante is out of position. It's not going to get back in time. It's going to burn down the base when it tries to defend this too. The Glaives, not not surprisingly, unable to deal with these Warriors. And that's probably game. The Dante just makes it back home. But like I said, it's going to burn down the base to save it. Down goes the Strider Hub. And this is... Like, the Dante basically has one shot to attack. And I don't think that's going to work. Like, I seriously doubt it. There's still a bunch of Rapiers. There's still an easy way to get that drop again and again and again. And a Thunderbird from Aquanum for good measure. Just to stun out that Dante because... Why not? Really? I mean, that's a great idea. And Aquanum with a Sharpshooter on top of that to deal with the Dante. They are prepped. Aquanum is going to deal with this Dante. Snuggle Base is basically walking this Dante into its own death. There is... It's not even a matter of execution. The units being used are going to cause this Dante to die. 
That's all there is to it. These glaives aren't gonna do too much, but yeah, that Dante otherwise is basically dead. Oh, uh, what thunder brood? Well, stop it. That that's also a problem. No, Snuggleace's commander is going to go down here. These glaives will take it out. No defense. Yeah, that that's death. Dante moving forward. Snugglebase's commander. Going down, going down, going down. There we go. That, that commander's dead. And that's basically it. The Dante going to move for one last gasp shot. It's going to give it one shot. The rapiers might go down here to the gremlins. That's a, that's a lot of anti-air coming in. But even with that, and the anti-air kind of distracting the rapiers. Thunderbird is moving into position. Two is Okay, there's enough Thunderbirds to stop this. This... This Dante is going to get, well, disarmed already. That's death. And another one for good measure. Yeah, that that's it. That's game. Another Strider up, though. Snugglebase not throwing in the towel, but they only have 10 metal. That's it. Yep, Snugglebase throws in the towel. That is game. And that was... I didn't find any gains following this, so I guess they just didn't play anymore. So it's not like that was a best of three or anything. A non-tournament best of three. So that's it. That is today's casts. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.